Good morning. As we started with the lesson, so that is uh, the age of Guptas. Already in the previous class, we talked regarding the introduction part about the Guptas. Then we talked about the sources. The very important source that we discussed in the previous class. So that was uh, account of Fahian and uh, Alhabad pillar inscription. The two major uh, the sources. So we had discussed in the previous class. Then uh, we also talked something about the kings. I just gave uh, about the idea about Chandragupta. Samudra Gupta and the Chandra Gupta second. So I just I had given an introduction. And uh, just started with the <coughs> concept. Or uh, just we started the most important topic of the lesson. So that was uh, contribution of uh, the age of Guptas. So in the last class or in the previous class. I talked about a very important contribution. So that was uh, in the field of education, especially the Nalanda University. So we talked about the Nalanda University and we also discussed about the characteristics of Nalanda University in the previous class. And next we started talking about the second concept, so that is in the field of science. So in that specially we discussed or in that specially we talked about the Aryabhata, one of the famous personality and its contributions, so which we had talked. So in today's class, we are going to talk two more the contribution of uh, the Gupta age. So that is uh, in the field of literature and we are going to talk in the field of uh, heart and heart architecture. Okay, so these two contributions so which we are going to talk. So when we talk about this particular concept, first and foremost, we will talk about the field of literature. Okay, so when we talk about the field of literature, the first and foremost, the major concept, if you see, Gupta period, I mean, witnessed a revival of Sanskrit language. Okay, the most important, the language that was more stressed and as well as the, I mean, given important. So that was a Sanskrit language, that is a revival. Once again, the Sanskrit language was brought to the famous because you know after the, when Jainism Buddhism when we started the common language started to be more familiar where Sanskrit language uh, had lost its popularity so once again that uh, a revival or a regain of uh, the popularity of Sanskrit language so that was brought by Anna at uh, the time of Gupta period so that is the one aspect so which we are having it so why it was became a uh, Sanskrit as a witness if you see because the court language Okay, so that was made as an Sanskrit by the Gupta kings. So that is the reason, once again, the Sanskrit language started to become a very famous. And in that specially, literary aspect, especially in entire North India. Okay, and uh, during the time of Guptas, or during the time of the, uh, I mean, Gupta kings, we can see many literary works, or many contributions, many in the areas. So, like uh, the personalities who were there, like uh, Kalidasa, and uh, we are also having Vishakadatta, then uh, Bhairavi we are having. So, like this, if you go with uh, Pani and Patanjali, I mean one of the Sanskrit uh, grammar uh, personalities, then moreover Panchatantra, you know, today we are all having a uh, short stories or we also call it as an, uh, a collection of fables, that is nothing but Panchatantra. So all these concepts were, I mean, made in a Sanskrit language. So at the time of the Guptas, okay. And in that today, uh, famously, all the literary works of uh, Guptas period, which was done at the time of the Guptas uh, rule, it's uh, even today it's uh, one of the notable contributions in the field of literary works. So in that I have, I mean, you have only one personality. So being uh, the Kalidasa, so who is known as uh, the Indian Shakespeare, okay, who is known as the Indian Shakespeare, and he is great. I mean, he was a, a greatest Sanskrit poet as well as a playwright, okay, as well as a playwriter, and uh, he has got major the five uh, literary works. So in that one is Megaduta and Ritu Samhara. It's the lyrical poems which was written by Kalidasa. 
then uh, Kumara Sambhava and uh, Raghuvamsha. So that is of uh, the great uh, epics. Okay, the playwrights of the Kalidasa and one of the masterpiece work of Kalidasa that is Abuja, I mean uh, Abhijana Shakuntala. So one of the most important so literary works. So these are the five literary contributions of Kalidasa which we familiarly we are having it. So it's a very important I mean concept so which we are having it. Then apart from him, so we are having uh, Vishaka Tattas contribution. Okay, that is uh, Mudra Rakshasa and uh, Devi Chandra Gupta and uh, Kirartana, I mean uh, Arjunaya. So that is uh, one of the uh, contribution we are having of uh, Bhairavi. Then uh, Panchatantra. So one of the notable contributions. Today, uh, moral values. Okay, today the moral values are taught to us through the Panchatantras. I hope you all might have gone with the, the Panchatantras book. That is a, a collection of short stories or fables. Okay, so which was started at the time of Gupta period. And uh, the speciality of this is, this Panchatantra includes the characteristics of various uh, animals and the birds who play the role like a king, a minister, okay, and other characters. So they play. The main intention, why this Panchatantra concept uh, the Gupta period introduced or Gupta kings introduced is to teach our moral values to our children. So this particular concept, I mean, was taught. Okay, so that is also one different development. So we are having it. But we are not going to talk about all the things. You just, uh, the literary works of Kalidasa. So you can just, uh, I mean, uh, go through it or you can have about all this, the five various and Panchatantra and Vishaka Dattas. Just uh, the literary works which was also developed. So at the time of, uh, I mean, uh, Gupta period. So that is the reason. So I just, uh, I mean, uh, told you about the, I mean, Vishaka Dattas and Panchatantras. Next, uh, we are having uh, the fourth most important contribution. So that is uh, the field of heart and architecture. So one more, uh, the last contributions of uh, the Gupta kings. Okay, so when we see in the field of heart and architecture, so when we see in the field of art and architecture, uh, there are a lot of uh, contributions of which uh, the art and architecture, if you see, the Gupta's uh, monuments. Okay, many Gupta's monuments, uh, I mean, uh, we can see. Uh, and especially uh, the Gupta period, since uh, they are the kings of the religion of Hinduism, they have constructed uh, many, I mean, the temples. Okay, so many... Gupta's art and architectures, many temples they have uh, constructed. So when we talk about the many temples or the paintings or the uh, excellent uh, the works of an, uh, the, I mean, the Gupta kings, so there are many, especially in Sanchi they have built uh, the small line uh, in the temple. Then Kanpur they have built uh, the many, I mean, the temple. And uh, especially uh, the concept of, uh, I mean, the two aspects uh, Kanpur and uh, uh, the Jansi so place. So there also they have uh, constructed the Jansi district. So we are not going about all the temples, but we will be going to talk about the one particular uh, temple. So that is uh, Lord Vishnu temple. So next we are having uh, the field of uh, heart and architecture. Okay. So there are, uh, um, I mean, as I said, uh, there are many construction of uh, the temples, but in that we are talking only about one important temple. So that is about Lord Vishnu temple. So we will be, I mean, discussing, okay, in today's class, okay, which is uh, built in, uh, I mean, uh, Dansi district, one of the famous uh, the temple, and it has got some uh, uh, special characteristics and special, uh, I mean, highlighting significance. So we are having for this. A particular I mean temple so what is the speciality of the temple that Gupta kings when they constructed or Gupta monuments or Gupta temples okay so what are the I mean the speciality of this if you see the first and foremost if you see characteristic is each temple built on high base so you can see here just a high base okay the high base is put okay high base and a second characteristic if you see, each side of the highways, the four side steps existed. Now, uh, one steps we are having here, then another step this side, then other steps we will be having this side. 
and back of the these things there will be so four sides okay the four side also the exist was there okay four side steps so what that is a second uh, important characteristics of uh, i mean uh, the gupta's uh, temple we are having especially lord vishnu temple and the interior was not decorated now the inside okay this region or the inside the temple the interior was not decorated it was just a plain okay there was no any altering or no decorations were placed under this okay that is the one more uh, the characteristics which we are having here the next if you see stone statue were installed in the garbhagraha so this is the garbhagraha inside so where now this particular temple is for lord vishnu temple so lord vishnu's a temple i mean statue was placed here and this was called garbhagraha so where only the purohitas or the pujaris those who do the, the pujas they are allowed to enter this okay such place i hope you all might have seen there okay garbhagraha the stone statue of particular the temple's uh, name like lord vishnu temple means vishnu statue will be kept so that's one aspect so which we are having then the roof of the temple and the pillars so okay the roof of the temples and the pillars okay where only pillars i mean the pillars which are there so they are all artistically decorated okay they are all artistically decorated and the stone statues of gods were installed in the temples so apart from garbhagraha remaining places the different uh, i mean the statues of and uh, gods were placed okay so this is the significance of the characteristics of and uh, i mean uh, gupta's temple okay whatever the temples they are constructed so all these temples had included i mean such characteristics i mean they were having it okay and uh, next now uh, like uh, i mean lord of vishnu temple so even uh, one more famous uh, i mean temple uh, i mean we are having it and especially in this particular uh, vishnu temple at uh, jansi district so that uh, the sleeping uh, uh, vishnu inside the vishnu temple i mean it means uh, i mean placed okay the sleeping vishnu uh, statue i mean also it is been a uh, place and uh, this uh, i mean almost 112 kilometers this lord vishnu temple from jansi district so we are having especially in uh, uttar pradesh so this particular temple comes in uh, the uttar pradesh so which we are uh, having it and approximately it is built okay in uttar pradesh almost 112 kilometers then uh, approximately it was built in uh, the 6th century okay which we are having as a part that is the one aspect uh, i mean uh, which we are having it so then uh, which is the statues of uh, inside the statues like uh, the statues of uh, ganga and yamuna the goddesses are been placed apart from uh, lord vishnu and uh, as already i said all four side the steps and the entrance everything so i mean uh, uh, we are having and this is a temple which is called as a 10 incarnation of lord vishnu okay that is the one aspect so which we are uh, i mean uh, we are having it dashavataram okay that is the one aspect so which we are uh, 10 incarnation dashavataram of uh, vishnu lord vishnu so this particular famous a uh, temple high rise then other famous temples in that uh, near uh, i mean kanpur there is a temple of uh, i mean uh, very with the artistic style they have constructed so that is of uh, the temple of uh, i mean uh, lord shiva and uh, uh, in that particular uh, particular temple the shivalinga of uh, the lord shiva is been placed in uh, garbhagraha and uh, other outside walls and all is uh, artistically i mean it's all decorated so that's about the i mean uh, in the field of art and architecture and in the field of literature i mean which we are uh, having it about the i mean uh, the guptas so here we end this particular chapter and uh, decline when we go okay the decline of the guptas decline it's not there but last class itself i had said about the decline so in the introduction class so when we talk about the decline once again i am coming back to the decline the entry of white uns i mean the people of uh, china so they made uh, the decline for the i mean entry of uh, i mean the guptas age uh, decline and uh, establish of various small kingdoms okay so after uh, i mean uh, uh, this time of narendra gupta 
So the kingdom got split into various small kingdoms, such a big, uh, I mean, Gupta Empire. So in that uh, Taneshwar, King Arshavardhana, existing uh, one of the personality, King Arshavardhana of Taneshwar. So he is also one of the reasons for the decline of, I mean, uh, Gupta age, so which we are having it. But even though the Gupta age has declined, but their contributions, especially in the field of literature, in the field of science, in the field of uh, education and in the field of uh, I mean, art and architectures, even today it is a notable contribution. Okay, even today it is a notable contribution to us and even today it is been remembered very well. Okay, so that is the reason. So, Gupta age is, we call it as a golden age. Okay, because you just imagine and see the field of education contribution. Today also we are having number of universities to give the higher educations. And if you come to the field of science, the contribution of Aryabhata, the use of zero decimal system and uh, the triangle formula and the pi system. So all these things even today it has been and uh, I mean functioning. And when you come to the field of uh, I mean uh, literature, so Kalidasa's contribution even today it is we are all uh, I mean studying in the form of uh, I mean subjects. Okay, that is uh, one of the major contributions so we are having it. Then uh, the field of art and architecture. So even today the constructions of temple, any temple when they construct. First they put the high base, then they construct the temple, four side entrance we are having, interior, I mean they don't decorate it, Garbhagraha is existing, then uh, pillars and roof, artistic decorator, different god statues, these are all things which we are having. So that is the reason the notable contributions of Guptas made the Gupta age to be called as an, uh, the golden age. Such a golden age that which we are, especially the revival of Hinduism, once again uh, the Hinduism culture was brought after Jainism and Buddhism's, uh, I mean, religion when it was established or founded. So, the popularity of Hinduism was uh, lost. So, once again that we got back only when the Guptas, because of the Gupta kings and their contributions. Okay, so that's about the Gupta age which we are having it. Next class, so we will go with, uh, 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 near, I mean, uh, either uh, the medieval uh, India or uh, either we will go with the the civics that is the local self government so we will go with the next class so till here you can go through it and next you can get ready for the i mean the test of either um, yes jainism and buddhism okay next week you will be having a test on jainism and buddhism so you can get ready for the next uh, i mean test okay so next class we will go with the new chapter or new lesson thank you